Hello Nation. Today we're going to talk about celiac disease and with me is my good friend and colleague Bridget Boland. She's a professor at the University of California in San Diego along with her husband Jeremy Pettis who you may know and uh, she's a gastroenterologist and we're going to answer some important questions. So I think the first question is what is celiac disease? So it's a good question. So celiac disease is essentially a process where the body's immune system is triggered by gluten and then attacks itself. This can lead to destruction of the small bowel, which is the beginning part of the intestines, which can lead to problems with absorption and can cause lots of, lots of symptoms. What are the symptoms? So um, traditionally the symptoms, you know, so actually it used to be a little bit different where celiac disease used to be sort of a, a disease of childhood of malnourished children who are bloated and not gaining weight. Um, now uh, we tend to diagnose celiac disease when people are middle-aged and there tends to be lots of symptoms. The classic symptoms are kind of belly aches, diarrhea, sometimes abnormalities in blood counts like anemia. Um, but other times the symptoms can be much more vague, like constipation, just different, different kinds of that. GI upset. <laughs> <laughs> you know, Bridget, when I was a younger doctor, I'll never forget the first patient that had it because I missed it. He had bloody diarrhea. I sent him to a gastroenterologist, Dr. Savides, and I felt like a real dummy because celiac is associated with type 1 diabetes because they're both autoimmune conditions. It is. So it's, um, it is more likely or more common in people with type 1 diabetes, kind of as you mentioned, there's overlapping uh, sort of genes that put you at risk for both. So it's five times more likely um, if you have type 1 diabetes. However, only 5% of people with type 1 diabetes have celiac disease. Got it. Now, if you read the tabloids, you know, I read National Enquirer, you know, Hollywood Today, and I have read that Billy Bob Thornton and Jessica Simpson have celiac in gluten intolerance. Dr. Phil's wife also has intolerance. Um, Chelsea Clinton has a allergy to gluten as well as Donald Trump. So what, what's the difference between all of them? <laughs> no political <laughs> here. So, um, so yeah, so gluten sensitivity is really common, talked about a lot in the news now. And essentially it's gluten called kind of gluten sensitivity or intolerance. And this is totally separate from celiac disease, but it can lead to a lot of the same symptoms. And essentially there are a broad range of symptoms that people can have, and usually it, they happen kind of, it usually quickly thereafter or immediately after ingesting something with gluten in it. Um, people can have everything from diarrhea, stomach upset, to um, headaches, you know, different neurologic symptoms. Um, there, it's a little bit all over the board. Do you think it's over, you think it's over diagnosed or people make their own diagnosis incorrectly? Well, I think it's something that we don't fully understand, um, and it's probably a grouping of a bunch of different things um, that maybe we'll kind of we'll hopefully understand better in the future. Um, right now, there's no way, there's no test to diagnose gluten sensitivity um, as opposed yeah, to celiac. I was going to ask you, how do you test for it? So generally, it's people eat gluten and don't feel good or have some sort of symptoms, and you rule out celiac disease. That's it essentially right now. Maybe this will change in the future. What about that test where they, they have to like collect your stool or you swallow something? They do a biopsy? Absolutely. So the, um, the way that we typically diagnose celiac disease, so again shifting back to celiac disease, um, typically the first thing we do is a blood test. Um, there's a good blood test that looks for an antibody called tissue transglutaminase antibody. It's a pretty good way to screen for celiac disease. Easy for you to say. <laughs> so it's a blood <laughs> test. Um, you know, it's better when people are actually eating gluten or have some sort of gluten exposure. Um, but really the way we typically confirm celiac disease is using um, doing an upper endoscopy where a GI doctor like myself or someone else um, takes a camera at the end of a scope, takes a look in um, people's intestines and takes a biopsy. And then a pathologist or someone looks at that under the microscope and confirms it, that it truly is celiac disease. Got it. Got it. I can see the big difference between having true celiac disease and this intolerance. Now, um, what's the best way to treat celiac? So I mean, avoid gluten, obviously. Anything so else? So that is actually the mainstay of treatment, um, which is kind of easier said than done. Um, we recommend avoiding gluten, which includes kind of avoiding wheat, 
wheat, rye, and barley. Um, typically, people do well if they go and see a dietitian, nutritionist, and really kind of learn more about kind of what contains these, um, what contains gluten. Um, but that's really the mainstay of, um, of treatment right now. There are drugs in development that will help people potentially um, tolerate some small amounts of gluten um, and, you know, may help kind of uh, allow people to have, have some gluten exposure in the future. Yeah, I've noticed like you go to Whole Foods, you know, and they have a whole section on it now. And of course, you have to rob a bank to buy the stuff. Now, you know, you and your hubby and I, we're, <laughs> we have a bromance. We drink bourbon together. This is Blanton's. What's the story with alcohol? Because most of our viewers do have problems with it. <laughs> so the good news is that um, hard liquor and wine are fine. They do not contain gluten, even if they were distilled like bourbon from rye. Um, however, most most beers contain gluten. So people typically have to, with celiac disease typically have to avoid beer. But there are now some gluten free beers. Um, and the good news about kind of the rising incidence of different gluten intolerances is that there are many more gluten free products now. I get it. even gluten free pizza dough and things yep, like that. Yep, absolutely. Well, um, Bridget, thank you so much for educating our viewers. And now I know um, so much more about celiac and gluten intolerance. And as soon as we stop, which will be right now, um, I'm going to have a shot of bourbon. So long, Nation. Bye. -bye.